Welcome to Toll Tips. Today we're going to cover screwdrivers. Now, screwdrivers were originally invented somewhere around the 1400s and they were obviously a way to take out and insert screws into whatever you had. Um, became very prevalent in gunsmithing due to uh, flintlocks having screws in them and well that kind of led the revolution of screwdrivers and the standards we have today. There are a couple different kinds of screwdrivers. We're going to cover the basics here today and a little bit of how to properly use them. Uh, there's many times where you will use the screwdriver improperly and not even know it, so let's get started. First thing we have, your standard flat tip screwdriver. You have a couple basic components, the handle at the bottom obviously. This one as you can see is uh, kind of oval shaped and that's to help it stay in place when you put it down ovals don't work so well but either way to each manufacturer their own uh, I also have an example of a square handle just to give an example back here but uh, this is a flat tip this is a medium sized flat tip I'd say uh, just from guessing probably a, well actually it says it on here I think oh yep quarter inch by inch and a half long shank, so your shank is right here. Um, on the bigger one, you can see it's right here. That's just the straight part, and then the tip is the actual part that engages the screw. So these are wonderfully labeled, actually. Got them at Napa for 20 bucks. They were running some kind of special. I got a whole set of them. Uh, quarter inch tip, that's the width of the tip, by inch and a half shank, that might be easier to read, and that would be the length of the shank down here. So, a couple different sizes of your straight blade, straight tip, or more commonly flathead screwdrivers. And they range from really little tiny ones to holy up to big ones. And everywhere in between, these two examples are right about the same. The other one is worn off, but it is a little bigger. Um, this is the prevalent type of screwdriver. Up until about the 1900s when things started to get a little more complex... Uh, the Phillips blade, which you all probably know pretty well, and you can see it right there, became uh, ever more prevalent in the 1900s. Another Phillips is back here. Now you do have multiple sizes of each screwdriver, as I said. Uh, here is a very small Phillips, which I don't know if this camera is even going to pick that up this close. Um, Phillips screws now are right here and you can see how the inside of the L shape is curved. Phillips screws have a limiting capacity to them where it is curved inside which will allow the bit or the tip of the screwdriver to slip out when there's too much torque applied. Um, that being said, now we'll go on to some more uncommon types. We have an example right here which is going to be your Torx. You can see they are a six-pointed star kind of shape. Uh, these are very common in automotive, and it's nice to have a set of them in any good auto repair toolbox. Um, here we have a bunch more different options for you. Um, don't know what these are. These are all actually security bits. So you don't know what these are. They're like a Phillips, but offset. Um, anything with a hole in it is a security bit, typically. Usually that's put there because someone don't want you getting in. Which, if you know what you're doing, is never really a problem. Uh, these are commonly used in appliances and such, but you do see them in automotive. Here is your typical hex head or Allen key. I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with those by now. Uh, Six-sided, not a store shape. That's your Allen key. Uh, English and metric with the Allen keys. Torx come in a T series, usually in increments of five, but you can find weird ones here and there, like a T27 or a T, I think a T47 I have. Um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, down here are uh, security bits, uh, uh, kind of done out of a flathead here. Uh, security bits usually do not have as good of torque holding capabilities is a standard bit. On top of screwdrivers you also have drive bits here as this one here shows. They're uh, made to go into your 
drill your impact driver as I have back here, as you can see. Uh, you have drills and impact drivers that will accept your drive bits. That's a good option for you there too. Now let's get into a little bit of principle. When you use a screwdriver, you want to make sure the screwdriver is properly engaged in the screw. So when you go ahead and you put your screwdriver in, uh, we're using a Phillips here, for example, you can see I'm pushing pressure and it's not properly seated. Uh, with a Phillips or anything else, you usually need to turn it until it goes right into the slot. Uh, when it's in the slot, you'll feel that positive engagement and there's no wobble to it any longer. Uh, many times when you're using a Phillips, you need to put pressure from the back of the screwdriver while you're trying to extract your screw. And that, that commonly happens because the engagement's not always perfect. Um, different size Phillips work for different size screws, and you can't always get them 100% perfect. Uh, a lot of the time with your home mechanics, you don't have a full set, or you're working with something that's been a little rounded or a little stripped. Pushing on the back will help you a lot. Next thing is your flat blades. Flat blades uh, engage the same general principle, push on the back. You'll get a little more grip out of them. Um, and long story short, push in, twist, and the helix here on the screw will allow it, as you spin it, to slide out of whatever it's inserted into. So now you know the basics of how a screw works. How a screwdriver works, and we've covered some common types. Let's move on to another step here, which is misuse. This is probably the most common problem with screwdrivers today is flatheads are used for pry bars where you stick them in and pry. They're used as hammers because you want that screw to be well started into your workbench. I can't even see that. My hand's blocking it. There we go. To be well started in your workbench, so you smack it a couple times to get it to stick in. Then you take your Phillips and you wind up actually inserting your screw. Hammers are for hammering. Screwdrivers are for turning screws. Pry bars are for prying. Uh, you'll catch me doing a lot of those mistakes because I have learned the hard way and I've broken many tips on my screwdrivers in the past. So when you run across a screwdriver that has a broken tip, you know exactly what has happened to it. It has been improperly used. I was just looking for an example, but I don't know where it's at at this moment. Um, either way, punches and chisels do get expensive. So it, it may be worthwhile for you to invest in a cheap set of screwdrivers. Small investment of 20 bucks, like I said, for my set I got from Napa. I think that was the cheapest thing in the store at the time. We'll give you something you can beat on and you can hammer on and you can use as a pry bar all you want without having any issues. So that concludes our screwdriver how-to or uh, tool tips there. If you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to post them and I'll try to answer them the best I can.